So, you have no idea how to white paint your character. Not a problem. Now, this video is going to be a summary of my bigger white painting series that has all of the details, but in this video, we will cover all of the most common issues that new 3D artists tend to have the first time they try and white paint. Now, something really useful I recommend you do is you click your rig, and on the right under the running man, under viewport and display, check in front. This will allow you to see your bones through your mesh, and then change bone type to stick, which will make the bones a lot less cluttered. Now there is an automatic weight paint feature built directly into Blender that you can use by clicking your mesh, shift clicking the rig, control P, and with automatic weights. And now it's not going to be perfect, but it's a pretty good starting point. And from this we can manually fix all the details by clicking the rig, shift clicking the body, go to weight paint mode, and on the right under tool, down under symmetry, make sure that mirror X is checked. This will allow us to mirror all of our work from one side to the other automatically. Now, if you hold Alt and left click, you will be able to pick a bone and left click again to start white painting it. But you will notice that this paint doesn't go through the entire object. In order to fix this, you can go on the right under brush settings and down under advanced, turn off front faces only and under fall off, change the brush type from sphere to project. And now when we left click, it will paint through the entire object. Okay. So now personally, whenever I see an area that is just flat out wrong, I just do a very rough approach with the paintbrush settings, strength and weight to one, and just cover the whole thing red. Then I go to the bone next to it and do the same thing. Now something useful to know is that while you're weight painting, if you press R, you will be able to rotate whatever bone you have selected, which is really useful when you just wanna quickly check the bins. And then I go to the top left under weights, smooth, increase the factor, and iterate a few times until you think it starts to look right. Then click the neighbor, smooth, click the neighbor, smooth, click the neighbor, smooth, and just do that until the problem goes away. And literally repeat the process over and over until the bins between every bone looks good. Let's talk about some common problems that a lot of beginners have the first time they do this. For example, weird looking bins that just aren't getting better no matter how smooth they are. Usually, if you are having some problems but everything is smooth, that means that you don't have enough edge loops. So if you're trying to bend the fingers but your topology looks like this, unless you use some serious shape keys and drivers, you are not going to get nice looking bends. Add some edge loops and then try smooth again. This will usually fix your fingers, your elbows, your wrists, your knees, and your ankles. Another common problem that beginners have is the natural bends in the pelvis area. If your character has smooth weight painting but the bends are still not working, then your topology is probably not conducive for good animation. For example, if your topology looks like this, then you are not going to get the nice bends in the pelvis area because the legs are supposed to bend around here, not here. So double check your topology and make sure that your edge loops are aligned where the joints normally bend. Another common problem that beginners tend to have is the infamous wrist twist problem. And the easiest solution that most professionals use is they simply have twist bones in between the joints. For example, if you are using the Unreal 5 skeleton like we are, then you will see that in between each main limb are two twist bones. Now you can manually control these if you want, but personally I like to automate any repetitive task. We already know that the twist bones should only trigger when the wrist turns, and they should do so in relation to the distance they are from the wrist. So the closest one should be twisting at around 66% of of the wrist and the farthest one should be twisting at around 33% of the wrist. So if we go to pose mode at a rotation constraint, set the target to the rig, set the bone to the wrist, and we want it to follow the Y axis using the offset legacy and local space for both. We just set this first one to 66, the second one to 33 and bam. Now you can see that every time the wrist twists, these rotation constraints will automatically follow it and do their job. Now, if you do all this stuff correctly and you're still having some weird looking deformations, there is a last resort you can do to brute force the perfect looking bends. This technique requires the use of shape keys and drivers. Now if you don't know what those are, I have a whole tutorial series on shape keys and a whole series on drivers. You'll be able to find them in the pinned comment below, but that's stuff that I've covered in different videos. But something about this video that makes it special is this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Yes, they finally got me too. I'm sure you've all heard of them, but there's a good reason for that. I have dedicated this channel's whole existence to helping people learn the skills they need to build their dreams 
fast. And Skillshare's value really lines up with our own, which is why I'm excited to let you guys know how they can help you start reaching your goals today. Whether you're trying to build a project, launch a business, or start a freelance career, or simply learn how to draw, Skillshare is a great place to get step-by-step -step solutions to figure out what you need. But one of my favorite parts about it is it has stackable lessons so that members can learn at their own pace, regardless of your skill level. It also has a variety of classes and teachers that allow you to find the learning style that really works best for you. Maybe you're a freelancer looking to build or maintain clients. If you are, you might want to check out Skillshare's pricing and negotiation class, which can help you organize, plan, create, and promote your own personal brand, even if you have zero experience. It's a new year, which means there's a new chance for you to make some real progress on your goals, regardless of whether it's improving your professional abilities in your career, or even just taking your side hustle to the next level. If there's any professional skill you've wanted to learn, and you wish there was a free trial that you could just test run, say no more. The first 500 people to use my link will get one month of Skillshare's services absolutely free. So shout out to Skillshare and thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show you guys, which is probably my most important trick, is weight paint transfers. Let's say you've made a character like this one and you have the base body, but now you need to weight paint the clothes. Now, most beginners would probably just redo the weight paint from scratch, but if you have a base body with the correct weight paint already done, you can literally just transfer the weights by clicking the base body, shift clicking the clothes, go to weight paint mode, weight, transfer, set vertex mapping to nearest face interpolated, ray radius to five, and source layer to by name. You're done. And now the clothes have the exact same weight as painting on the body, and we didn't have to manually fix a thing. Now, of course, you can still manually go in and fix things up if you want. Maybe you want the armor to follow the arm or the hat to follow the head. But yeah, that's generally how you weight paint. Hope this tutorial was useful, and as always, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.